In this video, I'm looking at the special cases of factoring trinomials. Now, this isn't really a trinomial, but it can be factored the same way as we did the others. The minus sign indicates that the signs in the brackets will be different. And I need factors of 25 with a difference of nothing, so we can just use the square root of 25, which is 5. And it works fairly simply. x times x is x squared. The outer term is minus 5x. The inner is plus 5x. Gives me no x's in the middle. And plus 5 times negative 5 gives me the negative 25 on the end. Here's another difference of squares in that I can put an 8x at the beginning of each bracket. That gives me the 64x squared. The signs are different. 3y times 3y gives me the 9y squared on the end. And that's it. These, these are fairly simple to do if you recognize the difference of squares. Now this example has a 4 on this x and a 2 there. So what we can do is we can do x squared times x squared that gives us x to the fourth. The signs are different. And I need factors of 18 with a difference of 7. And that's 9 and 2. The 9 getting the negative sign in the middle. Now I'm not finished yet. The x squared plus 2 I'm just going to repeat here. This, however, is a difference of squares again. So we have x plus 3 and x minus 3. Questions of this type can be done this way if this, this exponent is twice as big as that one. For example, you can do it with a 6 and a 3 or a 10 and a 5. It'll work in this manner. This is called a perfect square trinomial. And uh, you can recognize them by the perfect squares on both ends. See, this is 4x times 4x. This is 3y times 3y. And if you find that 4 times 3 gives you half of the number in the middle, this will be what is called a perfect square trinomial. You see 4x times 4x gives me the 16x squared. The signs are the same. That must be a plus on the end, which gives us two minus signs in the middle. 3y times 3y gives me the 9y squared on the end. And the outer product, negative 12xy, and the inner product, negative 12xy, add together to give me the negative 24xy in the middle. Now this is a grouping question, and the way I'm going to group it, I'm going to take these three terms together. They're a perfect square. x times x and putting in the plus 3 and the plus 3, that gives me the x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then I have the minus y squared on the end. Now, this can be written as x plus 3 squared. So, we're back to what we started out talking about. That's the difference of perfect squares. And I'm going to set this up thinking of the x plus 3 as a unit at the front of each bracket. And then I have the plus y and the minus y to complete that. So if you see four terms, it's probably a grouping question, starting out as a perfect square and then working with a difference of squares. A question like this, if you recognize the same thing in both of these brackets, you can let another letter stand for what is in those brackets. For example, I'm putting an a in place of the x squared plus 4x. This I can factor. Signs are different. So there's a plus and a minus. I need factors of 10 with a difference of 3. That's 5 and 2. Put the 5 with the minus sign. Then I'm going to replace the a with what it was standing for. The a was standing for x squared plus 4x. So I'll put that back into the brackets. 
Now that first bracket, there's no way I can factor that because I can't find factors of 2 that add up to 4. So I'll just repeat that. However, the second bracket, signs are different. And I need factors of 5 with a difference of 4, so that's 5 and 1. And I'll put the 5 with the plus sign and the 1 with the minus sign. And that concludes the special type factoring trinomials.